this is Gary again from the California Center for Research on Advanced Paddling with another crap video. Uh, I'm in beautiful Marina del Rey, Los Angeles, looking at the Fisherman's Village with its uh, multicolored New England style buildings and uh, make-believe uh, lighthouse. And we're going to take a look at the effect of paddle length on paddling, specifically load or gear or resistance. Everybody knows make your paddle longer and it's like a higher gear on a bicycle. Uh, that and the size of the blade interact, but larger blades uh, provide more resistance and are like a higher gear. And uh, also the longer the paddle. At least that's what's commonly thought. Turns out that it's a little bit more complicated than that. So let, let's let's get on this and see see what's going on. We're going to focus on paddle length. I have my epic uh, small mid wing here. I have it at the maximum of 215 centimeters from end to end. I usually never paddle it uh, at 215, uh, much shorter. But this will be useful here. So let's take a look at some different types of strokes. We're going to start with a very low angle, all right, stroke like this, like maybe a sea kayaker would do, um, and uh, actually rowing would be like this too, and that's a little bit different because of the orlock. But one of the things that you can notice is that the tip of the blade moves faster than my bottom hand, right? So I'm getting an amplification, right, of that movement. And that's like a higher gear, right? It's going to be moving more water, uh, more distance. Well, maybe not more water, but it's going to move at a more of a distance. And that's going to increase the load, right? Okay, that's pretty clear. Uh, and as I make the blade bigger, which means basically keeping my arms hands the same distance, if I make the wake bigger, my hand is going to come further away from the end, and a bigger blade is going to have, uh, sorry, <laughs> a longer paddle is going to increase that effect, okay? So horizontal paddling, uh, clearly making the blade, the, the paddle longer, increases the resistance of the load or the gear, okay? Same thing for a vertical paddle and that might be used for well definitely is used for uh, canoeing sprint canoe marathon canoe which is the high kneeling also uh, outrigger canoe the single paddle sports uh, did I miss any outrigger crew dragon boat uh, and stand-up paddle okay all of those have vertical strokes and it's the same thing right because the end of the blade and the blade itself, the entire blade, is moving faster than my bottom arm. And if I have a, 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 a short paddle, that effect will be less. And if I have a longer paddle, that effect will be increased, all right? So, as expected, longer paddle uh, used horizontally and vertically, all right, is going to give us a higher gear. Now, one of the interesting things about surf ski paddling with the wing blade is that we can paddle that way. I mean, it, it works that way vertically, right? And we can also paddle it horizontally. And in fact, I come up with a, a paddle called the triplane paddle, which actually specializes in vertical triplane and horizontal triplane strokes. But I'm not going to go into that now, but we can do that with a wing blade as well. Typically what we do, however, is it's a combination of both. Uh, we like to, at the initial point, uh, usually have some downward force, right? Just like a vertical. But then after the blade is submerged, we typically keep it at that same level and bring it out and back. So there's, a, there's sort of a sideways component. It's going sideways. And if you think about it, if I can keep the, ver the blade perfectly vertical, which I can't, but let me try to show how that might look and go like this. You can see that if I could keep it vertical, 
the blade tip and the blade is not going any faster than my bottom hand. I have eliminated the magnification of distance effect by going sideways. And that is a component of the wing a paddle stroke. And even if I make it longer, if I could get it in completely vertical and come across, it may change some aspects of the support of the paddle, but still my bottom hand and the paddle is moving at the same speed the more I have it vertical. If it's perfectly vertical, the length makes no difference. Isn't that curious? Now, if this is really the case, I should be able to feel that in more normal paddling. So let's do that. Uh, I should want to vary the paddle length for horizontal and then vertical and then wing paddle stroke. Uh, but I'd like to be able to do an A-B comparison one right after the other immediately uh, to see the difference. So it would be nice if I could have a long paddle length on one side and short on the other. Wouldn't that be cool? How am I going to do that? Actually, it's really simple, all right? Take the bite and the paddle and off-center it, okay? Asymmetrical. So I try to get my hands apart where they would normally be. Uh, my elbow angle is a little bit less than 90. And bring this all the way down to the throat. And I actually get down that far when I'm paddling with 190 uh, short paddle, the, the baby Jantex. So now what I have is a really short paddle on my left side and a really long one on the right. So now I can compare those two. Okay, let's do that. We're gonna start off with horizontal. And I can feel clearly much less resistance on the short side, the left side here. And I think you can probably see difference in stroke rate, which could be measured as well. I can definitely feel that. And just to make sure it's not a function of my lopsided paddling, now my right side is short, my left side is long. And I can feel big difference there. Okay. Okay, let me put it back. Short left, long right. I'm gonna do the vertical. And no surprise, the blade is moving faster than my bottom hand, uh, much faster on my right side less faster on my left. You can see how quickly and easily the left comes through shorter stroke length. And again, I can switch that over. Now I'm short on the right and I'm long on the left. And I can feel that difference easily. Okay, so as predicted for the vertical and horizontal strokes, Pad length makes a difference as expected. The longer the paddle, the more load, the more resistance, the higher the gear. Now, what about the vertical one? Okay, let's try that. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is, same thing, left. Well, I don't, shouldn't have to do it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to do as vertical as I can. Now, to the extent that I'm vertical, the paddle blade is not moving faster or much faster than my bottom arm, bottom hand. And I really don't feel much of a difference here. Interesting. Uh, at least not in the sideways component is what I'm doing. I'm not doing any downward force here. And I can switch that over to make the right side short. And I'm, I am not using downward force here. I just want to concentrate on the sideways, right? I'm using this as the leading edge. Okay, so that's how that works. I don't feel all that much of a difference. So now let me put uh, short on the left again, long on the right, and try to do sort of a more normal wing paddle stroke as most people do with downward force at the beginning. And I think 
I feel a difference definitely yeah I do at the downward force it's easier on the left side but after I stop the downward and go out and back I don't feel that much difference but I can feel the increased load at the very beginning on the right side let me put the short on the right oh yeah much faster coming through the downward so that's interesting as expected uh, the wing stroke is partially affected by paddle length mostly at the front not so much at the uh, after the blade is submerged and you're keeping it at the same depth in the water and moving it out and back so final aspect of that is I've always wondered about top hand height and a lot of coaches will say well you want to keep that top hand you know if you put it up around eye level it should stay there don't let it drop too much but you see top paddlers starting uh, so this would be sort of like straight across you see them starting around eye but then coming down even uh, shoulder I mean the world's best tend to be coming down okay so as you're coming down right you're less vertical there should be more of an effect on paddle length so you would expect really high top hand or vertical doesn't have to be high but getting it vertical and keeping it vertical means having that top hand stay high through the stroke and that would uh, provide less of an effect of paddle length on load right because it's more vertical it's staying more vertical if you're keeping the blade at the same height in the water however and coming down with the top hand well you have to be reducing that angle you're bringing it down it's becoming less vertical I mean the only other thing you could be doing if you're coming down and keeping the angle is putting the blade further in the water in either case as you come down you will be getting more of an effect of paddle length on uh, on the load or gear or resistance whatever you want to call it so I think this is kind of interesting um, the size of the blade should always increase the load I think no matter what you're doing with it but the length depends if you are going horizontally vertical those components will have that amplification effect and will increase the load but if you are keeping it to the extent that it's vertical and coming out to the side the length will have less of an effect so if you want your uh, paddle length to have an effect on your uh, surf ski stroke you're going to want to really emphasize the downward pressure at the beginning because that's going to amplify right and you may want to drop that top hand because as the hand comes down you're going to get more of a horizontal you're going to get more of an effect if however you don't want your paddle length to have that effect you could have a more patient stroke reduce the pressure at the beginning right and then keep it really vertical as I'm doing right now so that might not something that you can vary something to think about so I know a lot of paddlers are interested in, aren't interested in all these technical things but I find it fascinating and I think that there is a practical application of this to anybody who paddles one of the question is how long should my paddle be right maybe the shortest I can get my paddle is still too long right uh, maybe this 205 is too long and I should go down to uh, 200 195 190 so one way that you can do that is just do what I did here take your current paddle make it as long as you can make it and then put one hand down near the throat or maybe a I don't know a fist fist a fist uh, distance from the throat of the paddle and then get your hand spacing as you normally do 
and paddle and see what it feels like having a much shorter paddle on one side and a longer paddle on the other. Which do you prefer? How does that feel like? Uh, and you can get some idea. Are you able to get the, the shorter side completely in the water? Uh, what does it do to your stroke rate? Kind of hard to measure it just on one side. Uh, and you can also then see uh, on this side, this is much longer now than this paddle would normally be. How does that feel? Maybe I want to make my paddle longer. So this is one way that you can uh, experiment and of course move it over to the other side. Now I have a short paddle on my left side and a long paddle on my, uh, sorry, short paddle on the right side, long on my left. And you may want to think about seeing the effect of the different parts of the stroke how that interacts with the length. So this may give you a way to decide, hey, maybe I should have a, a shorter paddle, at least for longer races, uh, endurance events, ultra marathons, whatever. You could experiment with that. Of course, the other way I showed, if you want to do a normal symmetric, and I did that with this blade, is to overlap them and tape them like this, one in front of the other. Don't, don't go that way, that screws things up put one in front of the other and I have a video on that and you can make it really really short until it's clearly too short I mean I can even do that sort of like this although that's not how I want to hold my hands so that's another way that you can see the effect of a very short uh, a shorter paddle than what you're using now uh, but there's no way you can do that I'm not going to tell you anything about a longer paddle uh, the way the asymmetric uh, grip would. Okay, so that's enough of this. Hope this got on the video. Uh, something that I learned, I find it interesting uh, and it does have some applications and implications and applications to paddling, I believe. Let me know what you think. This is Gary signing off again from beautiful Marina Del Rey with another crap paddling video.